Hello and welcome to lecture 1 of ECE 113. ECE 113 is Communication Electronics. In this lecture, I will be uh, reviewing you on communication systems, basically a review of your EEE 107. So why do we need this? Well, we have traditionally, well not traditionally, uh, from EEE 107, you have viewed your communication systems in terms of uh, system block diagrams like uh, let's assume this is a low pass filter that's ideal or this uh, multiplier is ideal etc etc in EC113 we're actually uh, interested more on how to implement those different system blocks of your communication systems that's why it's communication electronics so before we go there, I would want you to uh, realign yourselves again with communication systems. And this is your communication system. So you have, uh, again, a message source that will be modulated and then amplified so, so that there will uh, the power, uh, we want to make sure that the signal will be received by the receiver. So this is, the, your, this is your transmitter part. Right, so transmitter. At the other side, you will receive the signal, which is very weak normally if it's wireless transmission. But even if it's wired transmission, there's a possibility of it also being very weak. Uh, if it's very long distance, like say 500 meters, that's already a long distance for a wired transmission. So uh, if it's wireless or wired, you still need to use what we call a low, no low noise and amplifier. This low noise amplifier would uh, minimize the noise while maximizing the, uh, the signal. Okay, so uh, we're interested in designing that. And after this low noise amplifier, it will be uh, the signal will be demodulated to the destination. Okay, so uh, these two blocks right here, let me just change the ink color. There you go. These two blocks right here are actually uh, new system blocks to you. Uh, normally, when we're treating them, we're actually just treating them in EEE 107 as gain blocks. Okay. So they provide constant gain uh, no matter what the frequency is. But in reality, uh, reality is not that kind when we're designing our communication system. So let's you'll see uh, in the latter, latter part of the course how we will design these amplifiers. Okay, but for now, uh, let's look at it first in a systems perspective so you'll have a, a greater appreciation of why we are designing uh, communication electronics. Okay? So in EEE 107, you did systems analysis, your basics for uh, communication system, assuming we're uh, using amplitude modulation, assuming we're using amplitude modulation, then we know that the transmitted signal is something like this. Uh, you have your amplitude, your, uh, what do you call this again? Your modulation index, yes, uh, the message signal, and what, uh, some carrier C of T. So once uh, you receive the signal at the received uh, at the receiver area or at the receiver side, an estimate of the signal can be retrieved and it's equal to your original signal divided by some loss, path loss or whatnot, plus some external noise. Normally, we uh, analyze the system by using, uh, by assuming that the noise is additive white Gaussian. And the power is n sub o. It's actually n sub o over two. So uh, I apologize for that. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. If the system is not overmodulated, then we can recover our uh, signal with what we call an envelope detector. Uh, this is how we perceived communications in Tripoli 107. So it's, uh, basically, you just need to know what. How, uh, how the blocks behave and you already have your communication system, right? But if we, uh, if we look at it closely, this is actually a, a deeper view of your AM transmitter. 
Okay? So, uh, this is the gain block for your uh, modulation index. This is an adder. So, it adds two signals together. This is a DC signal. This is some AC signal. And it will be mixed. So, it will be multiplied with some carrier. And uh, in reality, this mixer produces spurious components. That's why we need a filter so that we reject any out-of-band transmissions and we amplify that so that when it, uh, it is transmitted, the signal is clean. Okay? So the signal is clean and uh, what do we mean by clean? It means there are no out-of-band signals because out-of-band signals would uh, interfere with other signals. Okay. At the system, uh, the receiver side, the system level looks like this. Uh, this is your gain block, lo your low noise amplifier. It will be uh, filtered because the antenna receives not just your signal, but also external signals of other frequencies. Therefore, this filter will reject any out-of-band frequency there. And this part of your uh, system is your envelope detector. So this envelope detector will uh, recover your message signal and you get some estimate of it. So this is just an estimate of your uh, original signal. Okay? So uh, when you're actually putting the blocks together, the system level design assumes that the blocks are actually independent of each other. But in reality, uh, we this block would affect the performance of this block. This block would affect, affect the performance of this block and so on and so forth. Okay? So they, they're actually intertwined together. And uh, depending on your design here, it will affect how you will design this one. It will affect how you will design this one. Okay? And that is your uh, that is the purpose of learning about communication electronics. How do we maximize the design of our system? Okay? So in practical AM systems, your antenna picks up various unwanted signals. That's why we filter them out. Active devices actually add noise. When you try to amplify a signal, even the noise is boosted. So apparently, even the gain, uh, there's a different gain between your uh, active devices. When, when you're looking at amplifiers, there's the gain for the signal, and there's a different gain, sorry, that's a big G. It's a different gain for the noise, and uh, normally the gain for the signal is less than the gain of the noise. Okay? So, uh, in high frequencies also, signals from different blocks actually are reflected. Some of it will be reflected back. Some of, the, some of it will be transmitted. Okay. So, some of it will be reflected back. Some of it will be transmitted forward. This reflection here will get stuck between these two blocks right here. And that constitutes a system loss. So there are a lot of uh, external factors that we want to consider when we're going to design even just a simple AM system. What more if we're going to design our digital systems, right? So yeah. So aside from studying just the interactions of each block for EC113, the design of each block is also studied. Right? So some preliminaries. Uh, we have, in our system design, we have an RF and an IF portion. The RF lies the uh, normally high frequency, very high frequencies, uh, greater than 100 megahertz, but uh, 3 megahertz is also already considered RF. So this is already, uh, the key point here or the keyword here is it's upconverted. The intermediate frequency is the band at which signals are processed. Okay? So this is the band where we can uh, quantize, we can sample, we can filter the signal easily. Okay? And that is where our message is estimated. 
So there's a big difference there. Uh, after up conversion, we already we're already in the RF part of the system, and uh, uh, where, where the signals are processed, converted to g digital signals, for example, we're already in the IF part of our system. Right? And when you're designing your transceiver, your transmitter, and your receiver, you have to consider both of these. So where can we locate them? Well, actually, it's in the middle of your modulator. This is the part where IF is processed. This is the part where RF is processed. Because after the modulator, your signals are already up-converted by some carrier signal C of T. All right? So uh, the RF front end is the circuitry between the baseband processing blocks and the antenna. Okay? So in this case, these are your baseband processing blocks. Part of the modulator and the demodulator are baseband processing blocks. And uh, after the baseband processing blocks is your RF front end. This is the end where the signal is fired towards the receiver or the part where the receiver uh, receives the signal sent. Okay. So for transmitters, your front end design should be should have rather a specified bandwidth and a specific output SNR. So we have an SNR at the output for the receivers. So SNR out. The receivers we want the receivers to be more frequency selective and to be sensitive to very low powered signals. And all of that we will uh, see or we will study at ECE 113. Okay. So just some examples. This is an example of your mixer circuit. This is an ideal mixer. Okay. This is how we represent them in, sig in uh, our system. An actual mixer would look like this. So we have what we call a diplexer. So this is an RF circuit. So this is defined, uh, sorry, designed by the uh, high frequency engineers, and uh, this inductance is there such that the high frequency signals from here will not interact with the DC signal here. So the high frequency signals, an inductor which is omega L, the impedance is omega L. At high frequencies, the inductance or the impedance of this inductor will be very large. So that means it would look like an open circuit to your high frequency signal right here. Basically, it chokes the RF frequent, the uh, high frequency signal to be stuck in this part of the circuit only. Okay? So this is for biasing the diode to the uh, correct voltage so that it will behave appropriately. So the diode is a nonlinear device. So recall that its response is some e to the VA over VT minus 1. The VA here is a sum of your carrier and your X of T. And because of uh, this nonlinear uh, behavior of your diode, if we expand it using Taylor, so we're going to use the Taylor uh, Taylor expansion, we can see that uh, or we can find a factor that will multiply x of t and c of t using Taylor series. And the filter right here would remove other factors of your uh, Taylor series expansion and will, le will leave this x of t times c of t. An envelope detector circuit would look like this. Okay. So this is an example of a rectifier actually. So this is also a rectifier. So uh, basically, it only passes, if this is your signal, okay. it only passes the positive part of your signal and any high frequencies are actually filtered out by this low pass filter. So the high frequency signal, which is the changes here, right there, 
will actually uh, just so let's try to visualize that so this is your message signal okay and this is your carrier so I'm only using a mouse so I, I apologize for the bad drawing but the envelope detector would as the name suggests output let's color that in blue it will only get the envelope of your signal so this will be the output the blue one this will be the output m of t here okay so that's how an envelope detector works so uh, just those are just some examples of what you will see here in communication electronics now the important parts are the metrics how do we quantify the performance of our electronic systems right so of course in uh, designing communication systems always the signal to noise ratio for the receiver it's the sensitivity right so the ability of a receiver to successfully recover a message signal and selectivity the ability or the capability to reject unwanted signals and select the desired signal so this is in terms of frequency all right so the s sorry the snr is defined by this equation right here just divide the signal power to the noise power that's simple in db since this is already we're already talking about power that's 10 times the logarithm of the snr also this defines the level of noise distortion of a signal and the ideal value is there is no noise therefore n is zero therefore it should be infinity there are other variations like sn uh, signal plus noise so that's s plus n all over n that's signal plus noise to noise ratio and we also have signal divided by noise plus some distortion or okay, that's uh, another variation of your signal to noise ratio for uh, for our purposes let's stick with this original definition right here the receiver sensitivity is uh, the capability again of the signal to reject unwanted signals sorry selectivity rather so basically uh, your selectivity starts here the antenna picks up certain signals okay? but uh, it, the selectivity here right here is poor it will uh, if if you look at the frequency uh, response of an antenna so it's a kind of a bandpass filter and at some point at it rest at, at its what we call resonant frequency it will uh, pick up or amplify the signal here but it will pick up some signals in the immediate frequency bands right okay. uh, the succeeding components would improve that and uh, actually in this architecture that you see right here we call this the super heterodyne architecture or super het so I think you should uh, you should have heard this before in your triple e 107 course it's a super heterodyne receiver because it has two IF, uh, it has two intermediate frequency bands. Okay? We have IF1 and IF2 right here. So this is one and this is two. Uh, this actually improves the selectivity of the receiver, mainly because it's difficult to design a bandpass filter, especially if you're in a high frequency. Okay? So more, more on that when we're going to talk about filters. But except for now, that if you're in a higher frequency, it's actually di more difficult to have a small bandwidth receiver. Sorry, small bandwidth bandpass filter. Okay? So that's why you shift it into a lower frequency and then use a filter in a lower frequency, which is uh, easier to design. It's easier to design a filter in a lower frequency with a smaller bandwidth and then so on and then so forth if you add more if <clears throat> excuse me if you add more if processing blocks okay, uh, succeeding if processing blocks you will increase you actually increase 
the sense the selectivity rather of your receiver. Okay? The price is you have more components. Okay, next, your receiver sensitivity. So uh, the minimum received power that is needed so su such that can recover your message signal is the receiver sensitivity. So if the receiver is more sensitive, we have a better receiver system. And uh, it's uh, just, sorry, it is only dependent on the design of your receiver front end. And mostly by your low noise amplifier. Okay. Uh, uh, always, the, quant the metrics of your uh, LNA would be gain and what we call noise factor. We want to maximize the gain while minimizing what we call the noise factor. And more on this when we are going to discuss the system level uh, system level view of noise. Okay. So things to look into your noise floor is the noise power at the receiver assuming there are no signals. And this is defined also by the receiver's circuitry. Uh, recall that your amplifier could add noise to the signal, your mixer could add noise to the signal. Any nonlinear, okay, any nonlinear device could add noise to your system. What is what also uh, what also affects noise? A higher the temperature, if your components are hotter while it is uh, operating, that means you have a higher noise. Okay, so to measure the sensitivity, we use this metric, the minimum detectable signal. So the minimum detectable signal is equal to this. It depends on the bandwidth of your system and what we call the noise figure of your system. It's directly related to the noise factor, so don't worry about that. Okay, so knowing all that, so we have a lot to... We actually have a lot to think about when we are looking in uh, looking at the system level of your communication system. So aside from just uh, putting blocks together, you need to consider the interactions between the blocks. So looking at the system is the first step into designing your communication system. After you have uh, you have designed your system uh, in, in the system level, the block level. We're going to undergo what we call the link budget analysis. So this is a method or uh, of analysis to determine how much transmit power is needed for successful communication. So you have to consider everything from your message to your destination, all right, so that you, you're uh, able to solve uh, how much power do you need? Okay? And these are basically, we want to know, for example, we want to know the transmit power. You have to consider antenna gains, so uh, receiver sensitivity, noise figure from all devices, loss from the cables, propagation in the channel, and uh, also what we call the link or fade margin. Okay? So normally you're going to transmit in the wireless uh, wireless channel. We have a uh, propagation loss. Okay? This is the uh, the loss of power due to the propagation in free space. So don't be fooled though. When you're propagating in free space, there is no loss of energy at all. This is a perceived loss. Okay because of the energy being distributed equally from your antenna. For example, if you have an omnidirectional antenna, what does that mean? The antenna radiates signal equally in all directions. So basically, it will radiate a signal in all directions. Okay. It will radiate uh, signals in all directions equally. That means if the power here is some transmit power P sub T, that means if you reach this distance away from the source, 
your power is distributed sorry <clears throat> distributed among all the directions from your point source or your omnidirectional antenna right and if you try to harness that energy you'll put an antenna here and the size of the antenna would determine how much signal can you harvest from this dispersion of signal right here right so if your uh, omnidirectional antenna uh, your omnidirectional antenna radiates equally in all directions basically it's radiating in a sphere then the power at a distance let's say r the power that is received or the power at a distance r so let's call it p sub r is equal to your transmit power divided by 4 pi times r squared this 4 pi r squared right here is actually the surface total surface area of the sphere okay and the power lost is equal to so, sorry, wait. So the power lost is equal to your received power divided by your transmit power. Okay, and that's equal to 1 over 4 pi r squared. Right? And that's actually incomplete. So that's incomplete. Why? Because you have to factor in what we call the perceived area of the antenna. So you're putting an antenna here. This antenna has some form of perceived area or aperture. So the aperture of the antenna, so let's call it A, is uh, actually equal to some effective wavelength of the antenna squared. So if you factor that in, this is your, well, this is your, uh, this is your actually, this is not loss, sorry, this is the gain. Okay? And as you can see, this is the received power, this is the transmit power. As you increase the distance, you actually reduce your received signal power. Right? And that's where this came from. So our ratio of your received signal, the power of the received signal, divided by your transmit signal, that's equal to lambda squared over 4 pi r squared. Oh, wait, sorry. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, the aperture, I forgot, is equal to lambda squared over 4 pi. So that's lambda squared over 4, I apologize, I think this uh, PowerPoint is not cooperating with me. The aperture is equal to lambda squared over 4 pi. Alright? Your uh, free space path loss is 1 over 4 pi r squared. Therefore, your power loss, sorry, your uh, ratio of your received power to the transmit power is equal to this uh, dispersion, power dispersion multiplied by your, the properties of your antenna that is equal to lambda over 4 pi r quantity squared. And that is where this came from. If you take 10 log of that, you'll get this equation right here. So you'll get it in dB. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So next is the link margin. So aside from the propagation loss, the link margin, it is actually a some form of, uh, some form of, well, it is a margin such that uh, you ensure that your received power is greater than some threshold that you set. Okay? So it's usually expressed by what we call some minimum 
uh, carrier to noise ratio CNR or minimum SNR. Okay? So this is used to relax the specifications of your circuit level design and it is a level of robustness to the system to account for other variables that may affect the performance of the system. It can also be uh, called the fade margin. So you, you uh, allocate a link margin, so it's not really something that is innate in nature. You just allocate it such that uh, you want to relax your system, such that uh, you want to ensure the performance of your system. Because uh, the physical channel is uh, unpredictable, and uh, sometimes there is, there's, there's a random fluctuation of gain, especially when you're in a wireless channel, there's a random fluctuation of gain. So you use this link margin to ensure that your system will perform at a certain level. Right. So I'm saying all that, let's just have an example. So this example, we have a DBS television. It's a digital television. Okay. So uh, uh, let's say your transmit is 12.45 gigahertz, a transmit power of 120 watts. Your antenna gain is 34 dB. This is actually very high. And your IF bandwidth is 20 megahertz. A distance from the satellite to Earth is 39,000 kilometers. And your antenna has a gain, your receiving antenna is 33.5 decibels. The noise power at the output of the low noise block, so uh, uh, with gain 1 is this, given that it has no noise. Okay, what is the minimum required carrier to noise? Uh, to, sorry, the minimum required carrier to noise ratio is 15 decibels. What is the link budget? When we say link budget, we're actually looking for the margin. Sorry, we're not looking for the margin. Uh, sorry, again, we're looking for after we uh, use the, uh, we have a margin. We're looking for how much, how many decibels uh, of allocation, okay, do we have left? All right, how much budget of between the link of your transmitter to your receiver? How much budget do we have left? Okay, how much, how many decibels, uh, how many decibels are still available to us? Can we spend basically? Okay. So let's look at that first. So first, look at the system level. Okay. So uh, if we're at the receiver, the receiver has a low noise block. Okay. So that is after the antenna. And if there is no signal, then we have some measured noise power. Okay. So after the, the low noise block, there is some measure of noise power. So let's look at the uh, system. It's important to visualize the system. And uh, when we look at our, wait, again, this, pardon, pardon me. I don't know why this is not working. Oh, wait. And there's your solution, but right, let's try again. Yeah, it's not working. So first, you need to visualize your system. Uh, if you look at the system, you have a transmit power of 120 watts. So that means you have at the receiver side, this amplifier right here already sends 120 watts. Okay. And uh, it passes through an antenna with a gain of 34 dB. So this 120 watts is amplified towards the receiver by 34 dB. Right. The distance between your uh, satellite and the receiver at Earth is 39,000 kilometers. Right. So it will pass through the low, low noise block. This antenna has its own gain. So it will pass through a low noise block and then to your output. 
Alright, so we're looking at first, we need to know the signal power here at the output. We already know the noise power at the output. Right? So let's solve for that. So looking, looking at the elements, we already have a transmit power. So we won't we don't need to know the gain of its power amplifier. We just know the transmit power and we're done with that. This transmit power will go through the antenna. Okay? And it will go through some path loss and then go to the receive antenna. And then it will go through what we call a low noise block. So if you factor in all that and you uh, convert that to watts or milliwatts, your signal power after your low noise block right here is this value right there. Alright, so this is your link budget. So this is your link budget analysis rather. Your carrier to noise ratio is equal to the receive power divided by your noise power. Uh, we still have this much. And the link margin, right? The link margin is uh, the link margin is the difference of the actual CNR and the required CNR. So the link margin, this is your actual uh, CNR. If you reduce yung, oh, sorry, if you reduce the required CNR, you'll get this value for your link margin. Okay? So that is your uh, an example of your uh, link budget analysis. Right, so that concludes this presentation. If you have any questions or you want some clarifications, do not hesitate to leave a comment, a comment in the comment section below. Uh, thank you for listening. I'll see you next meeting.